and you hold knee for your partner, make sure you clearly have this hand reaching forward. And if you want your partner to hit the belly pad, make sure you use that high pad, tuck on the inside the gap between the belly pad and your body. You're going to reach your body, uh, roll forward just a little bit. Especially if you don't wear cup in the practice, you want to tuck that glute backward because you don't know if this guy are flexible or not. A lot of time when people are not flexible and they just come in and they scoop it up. There go your low blow. So have your hand out. Your partner is supposed to do something with that hand. It does not matter if he slap out to your side or if he use that same hand to pull into the knee. <laughs> that hand need to be one, on the belly, two, nice. So, why don't we have a pad outside? You could, here's why, this guy need to get a clear shot to strike. If he have a smaller target, he could more likely not going to hit the, max, uh, the maximum of his strikes. Because the target small, your partner don't want to like miss your target, it's end up he just kind of just throw not the full power. This guard here, uh, the, you have the block, it's a bigger target for your opponent, plus if your partner hit really hard, that over here, that belly pad don't come back and hit your sternum. So that's help a whole lot too. So reach your hand out. Pack your belly pad in. So just like jab and cross, I want to have this hand for this side. Alright, so that's me. That would be time where you are holding for someone a lot higher. So the hand signal going to be the same and you're going to tell your partner that the hand signal the same, but you want them to hit to the tie pad and not the belly pad. So here's how you're going to set it up. Have your hand up here, and I'll have my pad right on the side. Tell your partner, hey, uh, just knee straight to my face, okay? Because I have my pad here, so I can see the incoming. So that way I have my pad right here after I feel my hand being parry. So parry. So my partner is going to strike a little bit higher. There you go. That land higher. At the time he is parrying, the pad from over here move to the side. Notice that my head move as well to your side, don't stand there and have your head in front of the pad because that's a good chance you're going to get the pad knocked to your face. Um, so again, up knee up here, good. Notice that knee coming up so fast, you need to have your head angle away from the striking spot. So, uh, same thing left and right. So that's something you can do when you practice a lot taller opponent or if your partner are very flexible, you can use that technique as well. Push kicks. So you have your hand, one of your hand on the back of your body and then one hand on the front. Push kick. Keep. So you can ask for the front or the back at this point at this uh, technique, I want to make sure that that back hand stay there. One of your hand have to stay on the back because when your partner get tired, knee and T does sound the same. All right, when, when you get really tired, knee and T sound the same. Knee, of course, is a knee. T is a push kick. You get that too, huh? You call for knee and your partner get the teeth, yes. Um, or you call for teeth, they're walking for the knee. 
because it sounds the same when you're tired. But if you can get that pad to me, teeth, that would tell the difference to your partner who are tired. And so that way they can react to the target right away.